All right, we're up for the final video in this installation series of this uh, mini ITX build. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is just go ahead and connect everything to the motherboard, uh, all the front panel connectors, the rear fin, um, our SSD, all of our power supply cables onto the motherboard. So this is a little bit specific to the components that you have um, based upon the motherboard. If you need to find anything, or where things go based upon your components, always use your user manual. It's a definite benefit guide to this. So one thing we're going to go ahead and do is install the rear fan here. Now there's your motherboard might have a few different optional fan outputs and you can use your guide to see. Now you want to make sure you plug them in the correct spot so the CPU fan goes in this particular spot. That way it'll control the exact fan of the CPU speed. We're going to put the optional fan port right here. It'll say OPT fan, that means it's an optional fan for the case itself. Now I'm a fan of cable management, and that can be a very hard thing to do in a mini ITX case. Um, but basically just taking cables and tucking them up behind, um, getting things out of the way while you build. And then when you're done with your, your build itself, you can go back and zip tie things down, uh, make it look nice and clean. Uh, that way cables don't get in front of fans, you don't have loud noises, and if you ever have to replace a component, it makes it a lot easier to get in there and get at it rather than having a cable nest of craziness inside your case. So that's something that I would suggest. Next thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to take a look at our, uh, basically our cables for the power button on the front of the case and our power button LED. Uh, the power SW is for power switch. And then we have power LED. Now there's a little tiny uh, set of jumpers just right here. Um, <clears throat> depending upon your particular case, uh, they go in very specific places. Uh, you want to make sure that you put them on the correct slots or else your power button may not function on your case and have a difficult time trying to figure out uh, how it goes. So I refer to the manual here and that'll give us a good idea of, of where these go. So looking for power SW and power LED positive and minus, we can see which jumpers those attach to on this particular portion of the motherboard. So let's line them up and take a quick look. You can see right here, that's where they go. So we're gonna go ahead and attach those to the correct spots on the motherboard itself. Now you may have additional ones, you may have resets and some others. This is a pretty basic power button on this particular case. So make sure you put them on the correct spot. So there's little tiny pins and they just slide right on. Uh, nothing too crazy or nothing too serious about how you have to put these on. There's no clips. Just push them down onto that particular pin on the jumper slot. Now the reason why I start these first is they are very little pins. It can be difficult to kind of get back in there and get at them after you have uh, put everything together. So here they are put onto uh, the motherboard itself. Next is going to be our front panel USB 3.0. You can see that it's got a little notch out here. And the front panel uh, USB 3.0 is usually a full kind of black enclosed spot. So this is going to be right next to those jumpers. And you can see that the cutout portion fits right into the spot um, of the USB 3.0 onto the motherboard. So you can't really mess up the installation of this cable in direction wise. Normally it also has a pin out, meaning it's missing a pin on the cable itself. Now, when you're doing this, I mean, you, you don't want to force it in there when it's not supposed to go. Um, just going to wiggle it back and forth a little bit and we'll go ahead and slide right on. Right, the next front panel I.O. connector we're going to put on is going to be for our sound. Now this can be specific to uh, the motherboard itself. We're just kind of moving the cables around here so we can get them a little bit out of the way. Try to tuck them up here at the top and look at how we're going to cable manage these here in a second. So you can see that this big black USB 3.0 cable is uh, kind of in the way. We'll tuck it up underneath the case up here at the top. Give us some zip tie rails right here. So the next cable we're going to attach is the uh, audio cable. I can see right here. Now you'll have two connectors and that seems to confuse a lot of people. One's HD audio, which is a newer version, and the other one's AC97. Uh, you'll want to check your manual to make sure which one you have. Uh, this will have HD audio, so we're going to go ahead and connect that. And you see it's got a pin out, meaning it's got a blocked pin on the connector. That'll line up with the missing pin onto the jumper set. Now, if you don't know where your audio connector is, 
that user's menu is your friend. You can go ahead and just check it out. A lot of the motherboards will also have it written in white. So I'm just putting this additional portion of the HD or the audio cable, just kind of tucking it up behind for now. Kind of keep it out of the way and keep it clean as possible on the interior of this case. So, so far we have all of the uh, the rear fan and all the front panel connectors put together. What we'll need to do is provide power from the power supply to things like the hard drive, the hard drive static cable from the motherboard to the hard drive itself. Uh, we'll need to put in the additional 12 volt uh, CPU cable. We'll go through all those steps here in just a few seconds as well. Just trying to mess with the cables a little bit, see if I can't get us a clean installation here as much as possible so there's not cables all over this video to get a better view of what I'm doing. Alright, so I'm just kind of tucking up here in the five and a quarter inch drive base slot. The next step is to connect them onto this power supply here. Alright, now we can see that we have our hard drive here um, and our power supply. You can see that we have the little uh, basically written out on what cables are going to go where to the power supply itself. So we're going to use those braided cables that we had on our SATA power cable. So this right here is going to go to the actual hard drive. Uh, the SATA cable will basically have a little bit of an L connector. Uh, this is going to be our motherboard connector. It's going to attach to the motherboard itself. And we'll also need our 12 volt uh, CPU connector, uh, which will power the CPU. And then our SATA cable, this will give the data from the motherboard to the hard drive itself. So those are the remaining cables that we're going to put onto this. We're going to go ahead and do the SATA cable first. Now, really I like to attach the particular SATA cable into the first slot for the hard drive. I mean, you can really connect them to whatever one, two, three, four SATA slot that you want. It doesn't necessarily matter. Um, <clears throat> we're going to attach it to the motherboard and then into the hard drive. Now, this is also an L shape, so you can't really mess up the connection on this. You can't connect it the wrong way, backwards. Really, it only fits on the slots in one direction. And it does have a little bit of a clip, a little locking mechanism. So once you slide it into the slot, it'll lock in. If you want to pull it out, you'll need to press the little metal clamp down on it, and that'll release the cable from its slot on the motherboard. All right, so we're just going to kind of pull the case up a little bit, get a better view. You can see that right there, there was a little bit of an L connector. I want to make sure that lines up. Let's go ahead and just push it in; it'll snap in place. Has a little metal connector on the opposite side. This one right here is what I was talking about. Just pressing that down will release. Just kind of moving the mother or the case around a little bit, give you a little bit better uh, idea of where it's going to connect to. Just right here onto the hard drive itself. You can see that it's got an L-shaped connector on it. I'm just going to make sure we put that in the correct way. It just slides on just like into the motherboard itself. You'll hear it kind of snap in place. Once you've done that, you have your connection set. The next step of what we need to do though is we will need to provide a power as well. We're just going to kind of tuck this cable up here along the bridge. Keep it as clean as possible. So we don't have cables going everywhere in there. If you have it connected just right here, you can see the connection that we've made between the two, motherboard and the hard drive. All right, let's go ahead and provide the motherboard some power. So what we're going to do is uh, take our motherboard connector right here. Now, normally on these modular power supplies, you'll see that they have these split pins. On the power supply itself, you'll see that it'll actually connect in two separate spots of the power supply. So we're going to take our cable that's split and just kind of press it into the correct slot onto the power supply. You can't really mess these up too much. They're clearly labeled. And uh, this particular motherboard one only fits in one direction onto it. And so the only, the biggest connector that it has, we're going to connect both portions of the power supply. And that's going to connect to the specific spot on the motherboard, which you can't really miss as well. It's really the, the largest pin connector on there. Uh, so you can see we're going to use all pins on this particular one. And you can see they have these kind of rounded edges. So you can't really mess up how they connect in as well. So 
So this particular connection is going to go on this big black slot on the motherboard. It's got a little pin connector. You can see it kind of press onto place. And we're going to press an additional four pins into its slot as well. And that is how the motherboard will gain power from the power supply. Now you'd think that it would supply uh, power to the CPU as well, but a lot of the new CPUs require additional power, uh, which is where the CPU cable comes in. Which is going to be right here. It's a 4-pin connector on this particular motherboard. It can be an 8-pin connector, depending on your board as well. So right here is our power or our CPU power. It has a clearly labeled spot onto the power supply, which is this corner connection here. Go ahead and slide that into its correct slot and get it to press in and clip. We'll do the same thing onto this motherboard here. It also has the rounded connector, so you can't put it in the wrong direction. You can always look for the lip where it will clip on as well. I'm just going to tuck this cable up here along this opposite railing. Alright, truly we're almost finished. We have a couple more cables to install. Actually one it looks like. Next step is going to be for our SATA power. So this is going to power the hard drive. Go ahead and connect this to the slot onto the power supply. And then it's got a long L-shaped pin that's going to go right next to the SATA connector here. You want to make sure that you've kind of looked to see which way it goes in. We're just going to pop it right on there. These can be a little bit tricky. You might want to wiggle them back and forth a little bit. Make sure you get it in the correct spot. Some of the larger SATA cables can be a little bit tricky to get it in next to. Uh, they may be a little bit larger and you may have to take it out and put the power supply in one first and then put in the motherboard connection. Sorry to be blocking, you got to get a better view of how it's going to connect on there. There we go. We kind of twist this cable around in there and really get a little bit of better cable management now. What I'll do is I'll go back through and kind of twist tie this all up and make it into a neat package. And really that's it. That's our mini ITX build. I've got it all finished. This is going to go on top of my gaming uh, rig. This is going to be most likely a media server or uh, additional uh, just video uh, player why I actually do a little bit of gaming. Uh, now. If you found this helpful or you have questions about this build, uh, just throw them down in the comments. do my best to answer those for you. If you like the video, make sure you hit the like button. And as always, I really appreciate you watching the videos. I'll try to throw up some more videos of builds that I do in the future. I plan to do some water cooling, so I'll have those uh, when I get those uh, taken care of as well. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.